I'm Rich Bowen. Welcome to another episode of The Voice of Apache, a podcast in which we discuss all aspects of the Apache Software Foundation. Today, I'm going to be speaking with Christopher Dutz and Atita Aurora, who are two of the many recipients over the years of the Travel Assistance Committee. This is a fund that we have at the foundation that helps us support travel and lodging to bring selected individuals to in-person conferences. We're gonna talk about why the foundation has this program and what the recipients and of course the foundation as well get out of it. A lot of the interviews that we've done over the years have been about projects. Today's interview, we're talking about something at the foundation level, a foundation level committee. This is the Travel Assistance Committee. We have with us Christopher Dutz, who's a member of that committee, and both Christopher and Atita have been recipients of this of this committee over the years. So we're going to talk about what the committee does and why. So let's start with that. Uh, Chris, you're you're a member of this committee. Um, the committee has been around since 2006, I think. Yes, yeah, so, so I've been involved with TAC for, well, this year, it's exactly 10 years. Okay. Um, at Apache, I mean, we renamed the conferences uh, to Community Over Code because we wanted to get the communities around code to get around, uh, to sort of like get together and sort of like form a better community or, or strengthen the community. Um, the problem is not all of us have the luck that our employers sort of like finance uh, our travels uh, around the world to, to do that. Um, and well, for some people, uh, it's easy to sort of like afford a trip like that. But let's face it, for many people out there, it's it's not that easy. Um, and uh, so the goal of tech is to sort of like eliminate that problem. It shouldn't be uh, if if you if somebody asks you if you want to go to a community over code event, um, you should never have to say uh, no. I'm not going because I can't afford it. Um, and that's what Apache TAC uh, takes care of by sort of like sponsoring uh, the costs for travel, for hotel, for conference fees, and stuff like that. Now, obviously, we can't afford to fly everyone to Slovakia. What what are the criteria? Who do we who do we uh, extend this benefit to? Yeah, well, in general, it's uh, sort of like, yeah, we, we ever, every now and then we get an application like, oh, yeah, I, I wanted to go, for example, when we were in Seville, sort of like, yeah, I always wanted to go to Spain. So sort of like, that's not the type of uh, application that we, we support. But if somebody sort of like is already involved in open source, and it doesn't even have to be uh, Apache projects, but open source in general, or, or is sort of like, pretty enthusiastic about open source in general and would really love to go there. Those are the type of people that, that we would uh, definitely sponsor. I've, I've had heard a few times before that people sort of like think uh, TAC is only sort of like for the people, for example, who will just barely manage to have a roof over their head and just uh, sort of struggle to, to get food uh, for the day. Well, that's not what TAC is for. Uh, as I said uh, in the start, uh, TAC's main goal is to sort of like eliminate this, uh, I can't go because I can't afford it. That That's a whole lot more people than Absolutely. just the ones who can't afford an, an evening meal. Yeah. Is this for ASF events only, or do we also take people to other events? Well, let's say for all Apache events, um, but or the main Apache events, but we also sort of like have uh, other events uh, on our schedule. Uh, usually events where the Apache Software Foundation sort of has a, a larger presence, sort of like a booth or, or a track or something like that. Atita, you were a recipient of the TAC funding for our recent event in Halifax, Canada. Tell us about your experience. What what was expected of you and what did you get out of it? So I would maybe start with that. I mean, I've never had a, such a marvelous experience at any conference, not because it was sponsored, but otherwise, because 
I think the conferences that I've attended um, throughout my um, IT career has mostly been focused on search and information retrieval because that's the area of my work. But I think uh, community overcode was completely like uh, of a different universe altogether because it was not only search or information retrieval. I mean, it has no limits. And I didn't even know that so many, you know, um, open source projects which come under ASF Foundation exist. Mm -hmm. So it was like for a minute, maybe overwhelming. Mm -hmm. But I think I would say good overwhelming because I definitely had a lot of different ideas. And I think I also tried to reach out to a lot of projects afterwards to be involved as well. One of the th key things that that really stood out to me was, you know, I as a person uh, coming from India and moved to Germany like six years ago, and, and I've been contributing to the projects when I was in India, which is completely on the other side of the world. And I always thought that, you know, people who are contributing or committers or maintainers of these projects, they're going to be like big snobs. They're going to be like very arrogant people. And imagine like for me, because I've always, you know, interacted with a smaller set of this community. I think it was a sheer surprise when I met people. I mean, it was unexpectedly warm. I mean, I, I remember like uh, everything right from the time of my uh, visa application. I mean, I didn't uh, require visa application assistance though, but it was being definitely asked. And uh, right from the time that the tickets, et cetera. Uh, so Gavin was always, you know, checking with me, like if this is okay, because by the time we decided to book my tickets, I mean, there were like multiple hops and I was traveling from Berlin. So I had to have, lot of different you know changes in between but then he made sure that the travel plan that i have i either arrive before because of the jet lag or you know i'm, I'm making less changes because that was one of my preferences so everything was taken care of also the hotel and everything um, from the food from the logistics point of view as well everything was super amazing i mean i would say like there have been conferences for which I've been sponsored by my company, but this was world class experience. And what was expected of me was, um, I would say, I would have done more. I mean, it, to me, I would, <laughs> I mean, for, for sure. Uh, so we were given, I would say, like a briefing about uh, helping uh, people check into the conference, give them uh, the relevant t shirt size. And um, I mean, not as a compulsion, but I mean, it was something that I enjoyed doing as well was uh, introducing speakers in uh, the conference talks. And I think uh, that was probably about it. I mean, people rarely had questions uh, because um, I don't know, everything was pretty self-explanatory at the conference. And um, I would say this was all win-win situation. I mean, I think I, I can't... Uh, Express probably in the relevant words, I mean, how valuable this has been for me and my uh, professional career as well. On that note, I'm going to ask Chris this question because um, Chris was a recipient 10 years ago. And we at the foundation view this as, as uh, enlightened self-interest, right? It's, it's a little bit selfish. We're investing in our own future. So um, Chris, tell us how this how this investment has paid off. And, and, you know, there's two aspects of this, right? There's there's your career, but there's also how it's benefited the ASF directly. And I'd like you to talk about both of those things. Yeah, so, so I guess for that trip, you got quite some bangs for bucks, right? Um, yeah, well, the thing was, uh, at that time, um, I remember uh, my first ApacheCon I ever went to was the one in Zinsheim. And that was when I first got in top contact with the Apache Software Foundation. Uh, till then, I was sort of like only involved with I think Apache Cocoon or Tomcat, and didn't really um, when when Apache or when Adobe Flex joined uh, Apache. I thought, yeah, now I'm going to go there and have a chat with the folks there, and they sort of like got me involved. So so I became a, a committer um, a few months after visiting the uh, community over Co uh, Apache Con in Zinsheim. Um, and being a committer, I, I submitted a, a talk about uh, Apache Flex and how to build with Maven. I'll never forget that. Um, but at that time, 
Um, I was working at a company that had absolutely no interest in sort of like open source or even sort of like supporting uh, their employees uh, going to conferences or stuff like that. So um, I, I managed to sort of like uh, force them to give me the time off, uh, but they definitely weren't paying. Uh, and uh, yeah, for, for US folks, uh, it might not be that super expensive, but from a German perspective, uh, a trip to the US isn't the cheapest of uh, trips that you can do. So I was, I was a bit torn because I knew if I would be going, I could sort of like scratch together the money for it, but then there would be no, let's say, summer holiday, vacation with my girlfriend or whatever. So, so I would have had to sort of like scratch together all my funds to do that. Um, but then somebody told me about TAC and I um, applied, uh, yeah, and got, got, got chosen. Um, and because I got chosen, I, I was sort of like, I could wholeheartedly say, yes, I'm going to give that talk because I was in that uh, schedule for an international conference. I got sort of like headhunters approach me. Mm -hmm. so like, they introduced me uh, to a company that was to become my uh, future employer. Um, and I I'll never forget that while I was, I did the first interviews before uh, Apache Con, uh, and I got sort of like the, um, the contract while I was at the conference. And that was all because I was able to uh, give the talk uh, because TAC uh, gave me a, sort of like the opportunity to do it. Yeah, and uh, since then I've uh, sort of like, yeah, a big part of my day job has been sort of like working on open source software, uh, going to conferences, speaking. So uh, this was a huge improvement. And uh, as a little thank you uh, for that, uh, I think uh, directly after uh, starting at that company, I, I joined uh, TAC uh, to sort of like give back. And since then, uh, we've been sponsoring hundreds of people uh, going to conferences all over the world. And uh, well, let's say it didn't stop with that. Yeah. So since then, uh, I think when I did my first trip, I was a committer uh, in uh, one project, uh, Apache Flex. And now I think I recently counted, now I'm sort of like committer in 15. Uh, and the PMC of uh, quite a number of them uh, involved in ComDev, uh, a mentor in the incubator, and yeah, well, currently serving my second term uh, as one of the directors of the ASF. So uh, yeah, I would say yeah, that was a pretty good invest. <laughs> and you know, Chris isn't alone in this. There are currently three board members, current board members, who were TAC recipients uh, at some point in the past. And uh, I, I haven't seen any specific statistics around this, but my impression is that a, a significant percentage of TAC recipients do remain engaged. Um, is that your impression as well? Oh, absolutely. Uh, especially after, um, so um, especially after a community over code or Apache Con event, I always like because I mean I feel like I'm subscribed to hundred or two hundred mailing lists, uh, <laughs> but. Uh, I really enjoy when uh, those email addresses that were popping up in our uh, TAC uh, sort of like coordination mailing list uh, started popping out in all ends of the, the foundation. Uh, and when I'm sort of like, yeah, currently, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm regularly uh, acting as a chair of uh, the, the IoT tracks for conferences. And when I'm seeing uh, submissions coming in from yeah. former uh, TAC recipients and stuff like that. So yeah, they're, they're all over the place. Applications for TAC are currently open for our event, our upcoming event in June in Bratislava. And uh, to apply for TAC, it's at uh, tac.apache.org tac.apache.org. The call for presentations for our North America event should be opening fairly soon. Typically, TAC applications open uh, earlier, but but they they start they start uh, considering applications around the time that we announce our our uh, speaker our schedule because speakers are often some of the recipients of these uh, of these grants. We're planning on opening uh, the TAC applications uh, for our Asia event uh, sometime next week. 
and we're also planning on opening the applications for the North America uh, event in Denver uh, also pretty soon because we just want to give people a bit more time, uh, especially, uh, I, I guess, when, when traveling to the US events, we know that, well, the travel arrangements, that's sort of like the least tricky part. It's usually the time people need to get their visa interviews and uh, applications in. Uh, so we want to sort of like speed up or, or, or shift the applications to make them a bit earlier. Um, so, so people have the time to apply for their visas because it's always very unfortunate if we select somebody, uh, we already sort of like do the planning and then they have to tell us, oh, well, we didn't get, uh, or we, get an, we got a visa appointment uh, one month after the conference. Uh, which is sort of like very unfortunate. So we want to change that. Well, thank you all so much for taking time to, to talk about TAC. Uh, I, I feel like it's a really important thing that we do at the foundation, investing in in the future of our projects and, and sustainability is, is one of the things that's really key to, to Apache's vision in the coming years. I look forward to seeing both of you at upcoming events. <laughs> Absolutely.